Kim, thank you so much for coming. Um, on that even more basic level, how did you go about getting the trust of the communities that you work with? Like coming in as sort of an outside organization into these communities? So that goes <clears throat> all the way back to the founding principles of Water Partners, right, in 1990. And the, the operative word there is partners. So as I said, we don't build water projects, and so we work exclusively through a local network of NGO partners, we did in the early days now, supplemented with MFI partners. And so part of our evaluation process was to go with those partners into communities where they were working to assess their relationship with the communities. Are they well respected? Are the communities responsive? Are things working there? And so that's who we re rely on to really navigate the local communities, the, the, the customs, the culture, to navigate the local government issues that might come up. So all of that really is devolved down into uh, our partner network because there's no way we could, we could come in and understand these communities uh, and, and do this work directly ourselves. And, and that was, you know, back in 1990, there were a lot of organizations that were about that. And there's still some today that are basically, let's, you know, load up the, on the airplane and go fly down, and here's a village that we found out about, let's go help them. And, you know, it doesn't end well in most cases. Uh, Alix, can, can you add to, like, what impressed me was the village meetings and the, the you know, the bylaws that they adopted and the rules they adopted for the wells, for the, the gatekeeper, the key, and how they really took ownership. It wasn't an American group flying in to deliver it. Right. Um, no, sure. And I, you know, just to kind of to add to what Gary was saying, I think Haiti was, is a really good example of where, um, I mean, in any of the countries in which we work, but in Haiti in particular, the importance of those local partners, and particularly because I'm thinking of Roger, you know, who's a kind of our Haitian educator and one of our local partners in Haiti who spent a great deal of time kind of having a, an important dialogue with the community. So what's your need? I understand you don't have, you know, a, a solid water source, but if you want this, you know, we're not, and, and we saw this in the community meetings, you know, we're not just gonna come in, come in spend $5,000, drill a well, and then none of you wanna maintain it, or it's not a useful, you know, asset for you. And so, I think that entire dialogue, that engagement, so first of all, it's the community who reached out to the local partner that said, you know, we really need and want this, and creating an important social structure around that. So once, you know, water.org and a local partner will walk away, that well is really part of that community. Every, from every aspect of how they will maintain it, um, you know, even in, in terms of getting the communities to pay a small fee for that water. I mean, in Haiti, a big issue is that you know, everything is handed out for free. There's not this sense of having to pay small fee for water, and yet it's just really important to have a sense of ownership. And those fees are kept by the community members who are responsible for managing the well to make sure that if there's any breakdown in the equipment, that there's just small resources available to be able to repair that. So I think it's really that close uh, unity between the local partner and the local community, rather than having an external you know, engineer from the U.S. kind of pop into a community and say, I really think you need a well, trust me on this, let's build another well. 